and I'm very excited uh, because this talk really uh, draws on and reflects on some of the talks that we've already had today. When we think about responsible AI, we say bold, responsible, and together. And what I loved in several of the previous talks was great examples of the bold part, how AI is changing our world. In terms of the uh, responsible part, I'll be talking some about that today and how we can align the models to make them, uh, to make them uh, adhere to our responsibility objectives, to our AI principles. And the together part, Partha did a great job talking about how it's an effort to involve the whole world and how we do that and fold those back into the models. First off, I wanna just comment, our AI, responsible AI is multidisciplinary. This talk reflects the work of many, many people across the ecosystem, the people in this room, uh, as well as people throughout research, trust and safety, and other parts of the organization. I want to just acknowledge that. Next, we're going to talk about the responsible, the generative AI ecosystem. So when we think about responsible AI, a lot of people, and this is common in the industry, will say, oh, this pre-trained model isn't responsible or something like that. And um, actually, when we think about it, we think of the entire ecosystem, what people see is a model that's had stuff done to it. Yes, at the core, there's the pre-trained model and the, the training data that goes into it, but then there's a whole set of techniques we use, um, which we're um, putting under the lump of responsible generation, all the different kinds of training alignment techniques um, that are used before a model is released and are part of what gets released to the public. And then beyond that, we have safeguards um, just to make sure that in case anything slips through, we've got it covered and uh, user feedback and we do rigorous testing. And I'll talk about that a little bit. So when we talk about designing for responsibility, um, we break it into several steps. Uh, the first, and not to be overlooked, is um, your content policies. And this is an area, I think, uh, Google has its AI principles, and those principles are then actualized as policies. So for example, a policy might be, don't talk about dangerous, illegal, or malicious activities or don't offer harmful content, hatred, harassment, bullying, misinformation, sexually explicit material, okay, or sneaky stuff to try and override the filters. Those are examples of policies. And so by definition, in order to make something, quote, responsible, you have to start by defining your, for yourself what that means to you. And there are differences, and I think this is where a lot of the multicultural um, dimensions are pretty important because there are nuances and there are differences across cultures. So it's a step that we take is all our work is built on that. Once we built on that, that's like our North Star. And it's the basis upon which we do the, the alignment and the built-in capabilities. The second core piece of this, and I'll talk about each of these, is what we build in. And we build in capabilities for safety and fairness. We want to generate content that's safe and it's supportive of the diverse voices and cultures. We have input and output safeguards, adversarial testing, and I'll touch on it as well. It's not just the model itself, but you want people to understand it and give them simple and helpful explanations. And a lot of effort we put into the data as well, because we wanna make sure that that data is high quality in order to give high quality results. So one of the big areas that I'll talk about, and this is touched on a couple of the different things, is model mitigations. We break that into three pieces. Um, first of all, was touching on the pre-training data. Important things to consider in the pre-training data are obviously to make sure that we've got permissions to use all of it and get that aligned. Um, and we have a whole set of responsible data analyses that we do to look at the data, to understand uh, particularly around things like representation of people, to understand who's in the data, who's not in the data, because this gives an opportunity then to augment um, at this early stage for things that were missing, um, as well to make sure we do cleaning, filtering, um, you know, anything that slipped through, because a lot of this is on the web, to make sure that we've, we've taken care to remove uh, very offensive things that we don't want in there. And then, as well, we have these opportunities, and you heard this in the Thousand Languages talk, to if we collect data, and this is not a great opportunity to augment data to, ref to reflect the diverse perspectives. So we do our best at pre-training to get a diverse view. Obviously, there are more opportunities uh, beyond that to augment. 
A second area that we've put a lot of focus on is in the model tuning. And this is what I call the, the non-negotiables, non the things that are built into the model. And we've really focused a lot on fine tuning with as a core, uh, that you may have heard of constitutional AI, and going beyond that. But we do, we, we basically look at chain of thought reasoning, we look at neutral point of view, we make the prompt more, more neutral, and we also ask the model, and we talk about the chain of thought, to even rank its own responses, choose the best response. So we actually, in the training data, we have a whole pipeline of um, actions that we take in order to get high quality training data. And interestingly, we find that it's better than some of the experts, because some of these are quite, quite nuanced, um, and it's, it's worked well. Another area that we use in the model tuning is around improving equity and inclusion. And some of the areas that we're looking at for that are things like prompt expansion, so that, for example, instead of saying, show me a picture of a CEO, you might look and expand that about different types of attributes. And these are things, an example of some of the things that we do to improve uh, the model. And of course, reinforcement learning is a key part of everything we do to make those responses better. Finally, beyond built-in tuning, one of the things that we're finding is the importance of what we call configurable capabilities. Because if you use an example um, of the previous talk that was talking about MedPalm, well, one of our principles as a general vanilla principle is we don't give medical advice. But if you're in a medical application, you want to give me medical advice. So this is an example of you know, configurable safety. We want for some users of the model to be able to access some capability and others perhaps not. And so we've been thinking about ways to make conf safety configurable, very important as well in the enterprise uh, space where you have different companies with different things that they're doing. Um, and some of the things that we've been looking at, capabilities, um, are things called control tokens. Uh, you basically label some of the training data and say this one's about medical advice, for example, this one is not. And by doing that, you can then, on output, steer the output and get it to include a feature or not looking at controlled decoding, uh, so you can put your own classifiers again and steer the output to more responsible output. And I think another capability we're looking at is LoRa to get small sample uh, fine tuning, which actually you could slide in as a way to get a particular result on a query by query basis. I don't think we've done that yet, but that's something that we're researching. I also, um, the talks about composability was super interesting as well. I think we have to look into these things to make our models better. So uh, finally, in the next area is, is doing our best job to make the models responsible. We uh, don't always get it right, and there's some queries we may not want to entertain or things that slip through. And so there's a lot of work that we're also doing around safeguards, input and output filters. I think some of the, uh, this is, as we move into multimodal, this is an area that is garnering a lot of attention. There's a lot of tricky things. So um, we do have classifiers that are hanging around Google, lots of them, but they need to be adapted to work better for generative AI. Um, they, uh, we also need them to be policy aligned because if you have a not quite fit policy of something that was used for something similar but not the same, needs to be adapted. And so um, the context contextually aware is really um, important. For example, you might say, um, give me a man eating soup. And so what comes out is an image of a centaur or a non-human eating soup. Or show me a picture of a woman on a horse and it shows somebody who is a highly sexualized image. Okay, and so these are areas that we have to attend to to make sure that the inputs and outputs are contextually aware. Um, and lots of talk today around multilingual, multimodal. Uh, this is a really important area and getting it nuanced to culture. So the ways in which they were going about these is to leverage the LLMs themselves as well as um, looking at agile classifiers because I think we're going to need specialized ones. Uh, finally, on the area of red teaming, this is another area that I think is especially important to catch multicultural, multilingual, and nuanced harms. 
uh, because things are so contextually different. So we have three basic approaches that we use. We use algorithmic red teaming. This is around synthetic data generation, which is where it's super important to get community input so that we can represent everyone in the generation and evaluation. We bring in experts both in three different dimensions, fairness and safety, in red teaming, in security areas, and abuse detection. And then the community engagement, I think, is something that was touched upon here. We have some active efforts to engage communities in a variety of ways. We have one that's particularly dear to my heart recently. It's called Adversarial Nibbler. We're engaging people around the world to try and give subtle prompts to the models so that they can uh, see if we can trick them, essentially. Uh, which is a really good way to get diverse input. So these are all the things we're doing. Um, as we look ahead, we have a lot of challenges and exciting opportunities, and I'd love to engage all of you. Uh, multimodal is definitely, uh, we need, we're there now, and we need to make the models work. The other thing that I didn't really talk about is how to make this stuff scalable. Right now, I say we're building like Mount Everest one rock at a time. <laughs> because we have a lot of special purpose things. What we don't know how to do yet is scale this. How do I build a cultural benchmark that doesn't, you know, we're starting out from the position of only having Western views. So we're doing better. We are now getting certain cultures, great, great work here um, in, in, in from Google Research India. But how do we extend that, okay, in, in some meaningful way? I think that's really important. Um, and uh, another thing that we're really focusing on that, again, people here could engage in is around data quality metrics. Because what happens if you ask people to do stuff, they all ask the same thing generally. And so how do you force uh, engagement there, get our communities involved, um, again. And um, the other area that I didn't touch on in this talk that's super important is the advancement of human data practices. I like to say rate or disagreement is a feature, not a bug. And we have to figure out how to embrace that um, because that's where a lot of our understanding is coming from about the different cultural contexts. Again, this was touched on here. We talk about uh, responsible AI together. And this is where across throughout the life cycle, we need the engagement of people to contribute to AI to make it better. Consult community-based experts. One of my favorite examples happens to be a US one, was trying to do a study around predicting healthcare expenditures in the African-American community. And so they were trying to um, predict it based on doctor visits. Well, it turns out that community doesn't really trust doctors. I'm sure there's the same stuff here in India. And so they don't visit the doctor, so it's a pretty poor model. So you really need to start at the beginning and understand um, that things are formulated, get people to help in creating the policies. Then as we move throughout the life cycle, you know, trying to uh, collect the data that drives our models and throughout the analysis so that we can improve representation. Because I think that in contrast to safety, which is another area we focus at, improving an inclusion and representation, it's a win-win. You can only make things better. <laughs> and uh, so the more and the better you can do in that area, the more it makes the better it makes the models for everyone. So next steps, uh, you surely have read. I think another piece of this puzzle is because AI is so important and at the doorstep, it requires collaboration across the industry where we work together with the governments, um, have effective regulation that works for everybody, that makes sense, looking at the global directives that we're all following. And Google also participates in many of the forums like the Frontier Model Forum where we, industry leaders can share with each other and to help advance the practices to make uh, AI uh, the influence that it, that, we, that it needs to have, that we all want it to have. So, okay, that's all. Thank you. Thank you.